Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And then we got some coffee here and stuff. That's right. I am here as a resident, as a community member of Washington, D.C. And I came here because our police department need us now more than ever. These are brave men and women who took the oath, they took the badge to serve the community and they're doing just that. The narrative and the idea that they're out there hunting for people to kill is false. And there's every evidence to show that it is false. These are heroes. When we call them at three in the morning, they show up. We, call, we don't call the people we love the most when we're in trouble. This is who we call. And they come and they show up. They need our help or support now more than ever. I just came here to tell them our community need them. The economically challenged communities will suffer the most without them. It's all about saving lives. It were about, if we're about saving lives, they actually they save lives. Our communities, the most challenged, will suffer the most without the police. And I'm here to save my brothers. We know where the violence is. We want to make sure that we contain the violence, bring evidence and, you know, and, uh, strategies yeah, like yeah. evidence-based strategies yeah, to contain the violence. Say, see, the problem is like, violence. The violence is in our community. <laughs> These are officers yeah, with thrill to the danger, with thrill to true. violence. Yeah. We need to contain the problem, which is violence. And I'm here to show these police officers that we are with them, we pray for them, we love them, we want them to be in our community. When we want to call them in the morning, we want them to show up. They need the, they need the morale to be boosted right now. And I'm here to do just that. I came here with you know community members. I have a member here from Southeast DC. I have members from Ward Five. I have members from Ward Two. We're here because we need them. This is not the media. This is real people talking about dear communities. We need the police now. So, what has been the reception of you coming to these different precincts and and bringing and bringing food to these officers? What what have you experienced with them and and everything that they're telling you is going on? So much compassion, so much love, so much appreciation. I felt my impression from these men and women was that they are not appreciated enough. All I brought was lunch and they showed so much appreciation for that. I think we, they need more of this. They need more of this. If you're out there, you think this is right, you think these men and women need our support, please, let's do it, regardless where, we, where you are. You could be Minnesota in, in, in Georgia, it doesn't matter. You can bring a police officer a meal and say thank you, they need it now. Family, before I begin my remarks, let me go ahead and make this clear. I am not putting this all on my continental African brothers and sisters and Caribbean brothers and sisters because some of them are on code. I am addressing the coon class, like that bag wig wearing Sam bit that I you just saw in the earlier part of this presentation. But we're gonna have to talk about some things that's going on over there in her home country. You see, as the title of this article says, Cameroon concedes that soldiers committed Valentine's Day massacre, because that's where she's from, Cameroon, Nestrade Younger. She don't want to talk about the stuff that's going on over there. See, I, I've been there, I've been to 12 different countries on the continent. I've seen a lot of different things. And we're going to have to talk about some of them things today because, see, when you come over here talking about blick and blick cream, with that dusty, crusty-ass wig, I, I got to say it again. If you're going to coon for these people, make them do your damn hair. That don't make no fucking sense, man. Or at least get you a decent-looking wig. It, I mean, come on, man. You know, but we're we, we, we going to talk about some things today. Let's get into this because this happened earlier this year in February, as the article was saying from the title. The Cameroonian government has concluded that its military killed three women, 10 children, and 10 children in a massacre in February this year. The massacre took place in Garba, a village in the English speaking, it's in, it's in the western part of Cameroon, northwest, the English speaking part of the country where the government has been engaged in conflict since 2016 with separatist rebels. And for those of you that don't know, there's a Francophone and an Anglophone conflict going on between the English speaking and the French speaking parts, uh, citizens of the country. So, I mean, that's been going on since 2016 
a little bit before that, to be honest. You know, but we're we going we gonna to get into the facts about this before I break down some things on the, on the wig. The admission, this admission comes after the government initially denied responsibility following Human Rights Watch's first report of the incident, claiming instead that it was an unfortunate accident. Y'all see how they try to cover that shit up? Mass murder over there going on. They trying to cover it up, man. Joseph Betty Osomo, the defense minister with his corrupt ass, said that the army had acted professional as usual. Mm -hmm. We're going to see what professional behavior is in just a second. Y'all Y'all going to learn something today. After enormous public and internal pressure, including lobbying from the UN, Human Rights Watch, all of these organizations are corrupt, civil society organizations and opposition figures, the government agreed to set up a commission. So you got to think who's behind all this, wagging their finger when they're just as corrupt. The inquiry released this report on Tuesday, finding that the army was indeed culpable. Ferdinand and Go and Go, Secretary General in the presidency, said three servicemen and 10 local vigilante members will be prosecuted for the act. The government's casualty figure of 13, however, differs from those of rights organizations. Oh, it was a lot more than that. Human Rights Watch said that the government troops aided by armed ethnic Fulani herds. Listen, them Fulani herdsmen, some of them, I don't put it all on, but most, some of them. Listen, man, in parts of Nigeria and parts of Cameroon, as you see here, they will fuck you up. I'm telling you right now, man, it's like you have some, not all of them are nomadic herdsmen over there in that tribe, but the ones that are, a lot of land disputes will come up and like pretty much if they're walking around with their cattle, they might just pull up on your shit and be like, hey, we need this. This is ours. And they are armed, heavily armed. They will chop your ass up with machetes. They ain't got guns and every damn thing. I'm telling you, the Fulani ain't nothing to fuck with over there, boy. You know, the herdsmen, the ones that do that, let me make that clear. And I all like that. Had deliberately killed at least 21 unarmed civilians, including 13 children, one pregnant woman. Man, y'all hear that, man? See, see, Nistrata Yunga don't want to talk about this. Blick um blick crime. Uh huh. What about the blick um blick crime going over there in your country? The United Nations said that 23 people were killed, including nine children under the age of five. Local rights groups put the casualty figures a little higher at 32, saying others were missing. See, this has been going on for a while over there. The official inquiry said that soldiers had tried to destroy evidence of the killers. Of course they have. Following the exchange of gunfire during which five terrorists were killed and many weapons seized. The detachment discovered that three women and 10 children had died because of its action. Panic stricken, the three servicemen with the help of some members of the vigilante committee tried to conceal the facts by causing fires, reads parts of the report. The government had been reluctant to consider mediated dialogue to end the conflict with separatists. Instead, Bia, that son of a bitch, Paul Bia, that is probably one of the most, if not, the most despicable corrupt African president that they have over there. That bastard, man, I got to talk about him before I read on further here. He's pretty much a French control puppet. And that son of a bitch don't even be in the country half the time. He'd be over there in Switzerland with his Becky wife. And listen, y'all do your research on that motherfucker, boy. He ain't worth a damn, man. If you want to see the ultimate blueprint of what a damn sellout and a coon is, it's Paul Bill with his raggedy, despicable, vile ass, man. I mean, listen, but we're we, we going to continue for it. Let's read. Instead, Bill has been keen on using a military approach to quash the uprising, killing his own people. See, she ain't talking about that over there, which has seen an uptick in violence since 2017. The conflict has caused almost 60,000 people to flee to next door Nigeria and has internally displaced about 679,000 others, according to UN estimates. More than 3,000 people have been killed as the government moves to neutralize the terrorists. See, y'all see that right there? See, why she worrying about what's going on over here? Let me ask you this. When is Breitbart going to do a special on what's going on in Cameroon back where she from. I bet you, I bet you she ain't going to talk about that. And I bet you they're not going to put her up to that. 
when they wheel her little bad wig having ass out here to go and talk about black Americans, foundational black Americans over here, what we got going on. See, that's why when some of them come over here from whatever countries they come from and they're wearing our uniform and they commit these crazy ass crimes and shit, we have to ask, we have to look back at that and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where you from? Where's that motherfucker from? What is your background? Because see, they come from situations like this and they bring that same bullshit that they used to over here and then do shit and we all get blamed for it. We got to put a stop to that shit. Do y'all know? Let me, let me tell you something. See, for a lot of y'all that's not really connected to the streets like that. Do you know that the greater majority of gang members now that are black are not really from here? A lot of them are black immigrants, especially when you go out west to Cali. Oh, we got to tell the truth about that. I mean, you, you go out west of Cali and old parts of New York, you got Caribbean people, you know, a lot of them are Belizean out west. I mean, look, we just going to keep it a buck, man. Just look, just, I'll tell you what you do. Look into the backgrounds of a lot of these entertainers that got caught up in stuff with that Takashi situation. Just start looking at certain things and then ask yourself, when you see some of these rappers doing this shit, Cause the greater majority of them that's on the charts now are black immigrants. If we gonna tell the truth, start looking at their background to see where they're from. You be like, wait a minute, that ain't us doing this shit. And see, here's why it's important. I'm gonna tell y'all something, man. I don't care what African country you go to or what Caribbean country you go to. Just because you look like them and you wear their skin, you're not gonna take your black ass down there and do nothing to make them look bad, and they not call you out for it. If a group of us go down to any one of their countries or over to any one of their countries rather and do some fucked up shit as a group, they're going to be like, oh, fuck that. No, 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 no. Don't you put that on our people. They black like us, but they from over there. They're going to be quick to tell you that shit. They're going to be quick to tell you that shit. See, Nostrade Younger with all this cooning talking about the police. We need to protect the police and my brothers. My, my brothers. Now, nah, we not your brothers. Brothers, when you come over here. And you, you start that goddamn cooning. See, I love all my, my black immigrant brothers and sisters as long as you're not putting that coon cape on. Because, see, let, let, let's flesh further into this. Why it's so despicable on her part. We're going to we're gonna have to tell the truth about history. Whether it was foundational black Americans during our rebellions and uprisings over here or during slavery. Or any, any type of liberation movement that we had over here. Or definitely when you go back to the source of things, how most of us, not all, but a lot, how most of us got here, how most of our ancestors got here. Look back at who sold us on the continent. And it wasn't every African country. So for all of you that are just have this innate hate for all Africans, that's not what I'm saying. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying because all African countries were not involved in selling us. There were certain ones and we got to break it down even further. Look at the individuals that took part in that. No matter how they look and see, there's always been tribal conflict and wars going on on the continent between different tribes and what they would do is if they beat one tribe or the other and they took captives, they would, their version of slavery was not the shit that we went through over here. They would, in fact, the business, they would keep you and you would work for them. And at the end of a period of like seven years, I think you would have the option to marry into the family or stay amongst them or go back to your people. So when they came over there, you know, the, the damn pale ones, the Alabasters came over there. They were thinking that it was going to be similar and that they would come back. That's what some of them were thinking. That's the truth. And then when a lot of these countries that were involved in that, they found out that wasn't that way. They stopped that. So we got to tell the whole truth about that. But see, what I want to look at is individuals that did that. And why am I tying this to Nostrade Yunga with a Kunin, crusty, dusty, funky wig wearing ass? Because people like her to escape where they're from, they will come over here and do anything to stay in this country. See, instead of coming over here and saying, you know what? Let me side with my black brothers and sisters that look like me. 
you got to understand something. This is an actual conversation that they have with some of these coons because they vet them before they come over here. They will hook them up with these agencies like Breitbart and PragerU. Most of them are right wing, but Democrats will use them too. You know, the Democrats rather. You know, so it's not it's not just the left. You know, it, it's both sides that will pick these coons and use them. And, and they actually threaten these people. Some of them. Now, I'm not making any excuses. What I'm saying is imagine how little integrity you have or value you have for blackness that you would come to a, a country where your brothers and sisters are and you see the shit they going through because they're not blind to this. These people are not ignorant, especially when they get over here and they've been over here for a period of about five years. They see what's going on. Even if they isolate themselves, which a lot of them do into their own little segregated communities, you can't ignore what's going on over here with racism and white supremacy now. So they see it, but think about seeing all of that and you're going to side with our oppressors. You are a special kind of despicable. You hear me, you rotten bitch. I'm talking to you. You are a special kind of despicable if you can do that to your people. To people that you that should be your people. See, that's the only way I disqualify your ass out from amongst this. When you show me that you're a turncoat like that. See, imagine... Let, let, let's really drive this home for just in case there's any black immigrants that catch this or you are in the chat or you watching the playback. Let me put it in perspective for you. Imagine a group of black Americans going down to South Africa. I'm just using that as, as, as an example and siding with everybody that's been oppressing you there that does not look like you. Imagine that. All of us come over there and, and just help the boys out. We just start shitting on, you know, the people of South Africa that look like us. Doing the same cooning that some of y'all do when y'all come over here. Imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. See, a lot of y'all get butt hurt when we call this shit out. But like I've been saying, if you don't want us to say nothing, you better get on your people, man. Because if we went over there and did that same shit to y'all, y'all would not like that shit, nor would you tolerate it. And see, furthermore, further proof of that, and I'm not just picking on South Africa, I'm speaking facts. Anybody that hears this, you know I'm not lying about this. I've seen it firsthand, and you know what's going on right now. What they call xenophobia, do you know in a lot of African countries, and South Africa is just one, I'm not just picking on them. You will have other Africans, other continental Africans, come from different countries on the continent, because there's 54 of them. For those of you ignorant enough to think Africa is one big country, no, it is 54 different countries that makes up the continent. Other Africans will come there and they will call them foreigners. I'm not making this up. Black skin look just like you, but that tribal bullshit is so deep. They will call their brothers and sisters foreigners and act the ass just like some of us over here do. Not to that damn level, though. I don't care what you say, y'all. When you bring that up, a lot of them start talking about Crips and Bloods. That's two different damn things. You talking about apples and oranges. Most gang bangers only bang on other gang bangers. Y'all look at all of y'all damn countrymen that look just like y'all and talk about fucking foreigners and xenophobia. It's Afrophobia. There is no such thing as a damn foreigner on the continent. If you born there and you from there. And you and you have African genetic blood in you to the point that you have African features. How the hell are you going to call your own people a damn foreigner to the point that you wouldn't have set them on fire? Now, let, to be clear and be fair, a, a lot of that comes from, I got to tell the truth, some Nigerians do have a very bad reputation on the continent. I got to keep it real. Just like over here, they come over here. Y'all know some of the stereotypes some of that is true. Some of it is not, but it does not apply to all of them. See, I like to be clear and articulate when I say things and speak from fact, not that ignorant bullshit. A lot of y'all got to start traveling more. And if you don't travel more, you need to expand your social circle and talk to our own cold African brothers and sisters. They will confirm this. And see, let me explain something else to you. I bet any type of money. That if you go back over to Cameroon and ask about that motherfucker right there, her people don't rock with her like that. See, that's something a lot of y'all don't realize. 
a lot of these coons that come bouncing over here, they own people don't fuck with them like that. They don't respect coons on the continent. I'm telling you that right now. So a lot of y'all have this misconception if you've never been over there that y'all get to thinking that, oh shit, man, if that she like that or he like that, come over here cooning, all of them must be like that. Nah, man, let me tell you. I don't care whether it's down in Jamaica or Haiti or any of the African you know, countries and nations over there. Coon don't get no respect at home. That's why they have to bounce a lot of times. Nobody was rocking with them like that over there because they knew that you was the motherfucking turncoat and the weasel that will sell us out the first chance you get. And see, I'm finna embarrass this motherfucker right here. I got to get on her ass. Do you know that the, the helpers like this, male and female, they come over here and do this damn cooning, saying shit that they know is not true because they know they're not ignorant. Y'all don't think they get over here and just fool these motherfuckers. They feed these bitches a script. And I'm speaking, when I say bitch, I'm talking male and female. And they are so loyal to the first white person that they can get up under. That's even in the UK. They are so loyal to the first white person that they can get up under, man. I'm telling y'all, man, that that's the truth. That is the truth. That's what they do. And they don't waste no motherfucking time, man, kissing ass to get up on the white folks. They don't. That's just the truth of it. See, I could not imagine looking myself in the mirror if I woke up and I didn't have any type of integrity whatsoever. Because, I mean, let, let me tell you how something. They're not paying them people a whole lot of money to do that. Man, you start looking into their background and seeing what these motherfuckers you see. Listen, let me get on some of our coons. Look at Stacey Dash. You would think that they would be set. You see, she's struggling right now. All that goddamn coon and that shit don't pay off. Jason Whitlock, fat ass. They showed his ass right on out the door from over there at ESPN. All that damn cooning. See, at some point, you got to look back at the coon track record and be like, shit, it didn't pay off for these other coons. But see, each one of them, they think they're going to be the special coon. Each one of them think they have a refined formula for the cooning that the white folks are going to appreciate all that shit that they do. And then, as Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. says, our honorable elder, when white supremacy finishes with his tools, it always breaks them. It always breaks them. Despicable, man. So, Nostrada Yunga, I'm, I'm going to need you to start talking about what's going on over there in your country. Let's get on that toxic masculinity and blick and blick crime. Let's talk about that. See, it, it ain't the same when somebody point that shit out. Your people are over there are suffering. Our brothers and sisters are over there suffering right now. And it's far worse than what this article read because see I'm going to tell y'all something I, I talked to a lot of African brothers and sisters right now I'm not going to call the sister's name but there's a sister from Zimbabwe let me tell you something man the violence against women by some of the men over there some I'm not going to put it on all of them but it's bad man not only is it rape imagine this somebody sexually assaulting you and raping you just for speaking the truth and then forcing you to drink your own urine oh yeah I'm not making this up if that sister's in this chat now or she sees this, she can confirm it. She knows. See, I, I have a large audience on this channel from all over the place. And they know what I'm talking about here when I'm speaking on this. They know I'm not talking about all of them. But this coon class, uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't care whether it's right here in America with what we're going through now to get our independence and freedom from this system of white supremacy or over there on the continent or in the Caribbean. I said it before on a previous broadcast, them coons have to be dealt with. You got to go. See, you, you always have those amongst black folks, the global black family, that when everybody is suffering or going through it, instead of saying, you know what? It's bad. I don't like it, but I'm going to stick with my people. And we're going to push together every day until we make progress. You always got the weak ones that'll say, you know what? Uh-uh, fuck this. Fuck this and fuck them. If white mommy and white daddy will give me a little something to lift me up just a little bit above you, 
I'm going to sell all of y'all out. They don't care about women, children, the future, the elderly, nobody. They don't give a damn about that. All they think about is self. That's it. And in the end, the ironic thing is, this is what you coons don't realize. Let's just say you really don't give a damn about none of us. Okay, that's cool. You ain't got to give a damn about us. When you isolate yourself from your people and you go over there, you don't think they're going to turn on you eventually? Hmm? See, see, they don't plan that far down the road. Y'all saw that video where that jackass was out there in the woods with them damn rednecks thinking they was his white friends and they was about to lynch his ass. And you saw what his white buddies did. They were like, oh, stop. See, y'all notice that when white folks are doing some fucked up shit, they only verbally say something. They don't physically try to save your black ass. And that's exactly the situation most of these damn coons are going to find themselves in. That's why I keep warning y'all, man, about situations. You have whoever friends you want. Not all white people are like that. We know that. But you better be careful about isolating yourself around these people, man. Because even the so-called good white folks, they not going to physically step in. Very few of them will physically step in to defend your black ass from their own people. It's a, it's, it, I mean, you got to understand how on cold they are. Just look at how they act. They can be rocking with you one minute saying all that shit to make you think, oh, man, boy, do, do you white folk cool? And when as soon as they people do some shit and it's time to correct them, they rally around their folks. Y'all got to understand how deep this programming goes with these motherfucking people, man. Before I close this out, I'm, I'm going to put this on your mind because maybe there's some young coon that comes across this. And maybe this will get some sense into your head, wherever you're from, foundational black American or not. When you come over here to America or anywhere where white people are, start looking at what history really is. It really matters because these people feed themselves a bunch of lies about everything. They tell themselves they invented everything. We know that's not true. They claim Christopher Columbus discovered America. He never set foot here. They lie to themselves about everything and they believe their own lies. See, that's what's most dangerous about the dominant society. It's one thing for you to tell a lie and you know you lying and you don't buy it, but they buy their own lies to the point that they will support and fight to the death about Confederate statues of treasonous traitors to this damn nation and try to hide behind the lie talking about Southern culture and pride Okay, well, if you're going to be a patriot, how can you be for honoring the Confederacy? That makes no sense. That's an oxymoron. So my point is, you think about people that dedicated to a lie. You think about that. And you think about where your coon and black ass fit into that. Black family, I'm going to leave that right there. I had to get on her bad wig wearing ass. Because, I mean, she going to be popping up, but see, her wake-up call is coming. Her wake-up call is coming, and I'm going to say this before I close it right here. It's one thing for a foundational black American coon to be put out of the pasture. They don't borrow time, but your time as a black immigrant coon is extremely short. They value you even less. Like it or not, those are the facts. Black first. Stay safe. I'll see you all in future content.